from Nashville, Tennessee. This is the day the Lord has made. Join us for the next 30 minutes as we share the gospel ministry of Dale and Jerry Robbins. Thank you for helping us to keep making these video presentations. Make your donation online at victorious.org forward slash donate. 
Once again, that's victorious.org forward slash donate. Thanks again for your faithfulness. May God richly bless you. Some of the many benefits of being a follower of Christ include His promise to hear and answer our prayers, as well as to help us, protect us, and bring His blessings and provision. For instance, listen to this reassuring psalm, which applies not only to Israel, but to all of His followers. He says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord who who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even evermore. Psalm 121, 1 through 8. But even though we have this and many other scriptures and passages of God's assurance, giving us the promise of His help and blessing when we call upon Him, we also realize this doesn't exempt any of us from problems or even the possibility of tragedy. Jesus said in Matthew 5.45 that the rain falls on the just and the unjust. And other passages tell us that those who follow Christ will experience temptations and trials just like anybody else. Sometimes so severe our faith may be tested to its limit. Listen to what Solomon said from this easy-to-read translation. Both good and bad things happen to everyone. They happen to those who are fair and those who are wicked. They happen to those who are good and and to those who are evil. They happen to those who sacrifice and to those who who do not. The same things happen to a good person as happen to a sinner. The same things happen to a person who makes promises to God as as to one who does not. This is something unfair that happens on the here on the earth. The same thing happens to everyone. Ecclesiastes 9 two through three. However, something we can be sure of, if we have trusted Jesus Christ with our life, He is in charge of everything that happens to us. And even though there may be moments of great difficulty or heartaches, He promises at least these three things that I want to share with you today. Number one, that He will not allow anything to come upon you that is more than you can bear. As Scripture says, no temptation has taken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but will with the temptation also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. And then number two, that all things, whether good or bad, will work together for a good result in your life. As the scripture says, as Paul wrote, as, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose, Romans 8, 28. And then, number three, that he will eventually answer our cry to deliver us from our afflictions, either by removing them or by giving us the peace and strength to endure them. The Bible says, the righteous cry out, and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart, and saves such as have a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Psalm 34, 17 through 19. Despite whatever trials we face, This gives us reason for great optimism, as it won't likely go on forever. And until then, we can adjust our attitude of faith to rise above the difficulty with with praise to God, just like 
Paul and Silas did as they prayed and sang praises to God, while at the same time tortured and bound in stocks in the Philippian dungeon. As I said, temptations and trials are common to all believers because they are necessary components to our faith in God. Faith that is untested is not really worth anything, any more than raw gold ore that has not been yet purged and refined in the smelting furnace. Thus, trials serve that purpose of testing and refining our faith, as the Apostle Paul wrote, greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials, that the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that, that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. 1 Peter 1, 6-7. Sure, it's easy to say and for, for me to preach here or to teach about this, but, but it hasn't always been easy to do or to apply in practice, I know, because I've been there. Many of those to whom Peter wrote seem surprised by the persecution and trials they experience as though they didn't expect their faith to be contested or challenged. However, this must be anticipated by all of us. He said, Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing has happened to you. But rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when His glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. 1 Peter 4, 12-13 Anyone who lives for the Lord Jesus Christ will be tested and will be opposed at times by Satan, for which you must be prepared to resist, to rebuke, and persist against in faith in the name of our Lord Jesus. In many instances, this may be all it takes to rise above such trials and conflicts, to resist, to uh, stand firm in faith, but there will be other scenarios in which victory will not come quick and simple as it was with the Apostle Paul when the Lord allowed a messenger of Satan to come and to oppose him, to keep him humble and on his knees before God, 2 Corinthians 12, 8 through 9. There will be times trials will be allowed to continue on despite our best efforts, and we can only persist in faith and patience until the appointed time for the Lord to bring an end to it. In his devotional, My Upmost for His Highest, Oswald Chambers wrote this. He said, Faith must be tested because it can only become your intimate possession through conflict. If you believe steadfastly on Him, everything that challenges you, you will strengthen your faith. One of the most extreme examples of faith tested can be seen in the life of Job described by the biblical book bearing his name. While the kind of ordeals that befell Job may not be typical of the daily problems that most believers face, all of God's children will experience temptations and trials, some so severe their faith will be pushed to the edge. According to scripture, Job was the wealthiest man of his region and had a remarkably blessed life. He was also an outstanding follower of the Lord, as the scripture says, blameless and upright, and one who feared God and shunned evil in Job 1 and verse 1. And ironically, it's for that reason he was singled out and allowed to be tried by the devil. Once God gave Satan per permission to try him, Job essentially began experiencing the loss of everything he had including his health, along with the support of his friends and even his wife. We don't know how long this ordeal lasted, but Scripture only refers to months in Job 7 and verse 3, while Jewish tradition suggests a year or longer. First, Job's 1,000 oxen and donkeys were stolen and his servants were killed. Fire then fell from the sky and consumed his 7,000 sheep killing more, more of his servants. 
Then his 3,000 camels were stolen and even more of his servants were killed in Job 1 verse 17. Following this, <laughs> a great wind destroyed a house, killing Job's seven sons and three daughters in verses 18 through 19 of chapter 1. <laughs> Man, I, it pains me to, to even recount all this, this stuff. It's horrible. And what was Job's response? He grieved deeply, obviously, over the awful things that were happening, but he refused to blame God in the least. The Bible says, Job stood up and tore his robe in grief. I'm sure that I would do the same thing. And then he shaved his head and fell to the ground to worship, and he said, I came naked from my mother's womb, and I will be naked when I leave. The Lord gave me what I had, and the Lord has taken it away. Praise the name of the Lord. Oh my, oh my, I, I don't know how to describe this. This is incredible. Do you have that kind of faith that you could say that, that you trust that God, whatever he is doing, is doing it for your good? And the scripture goes on to say, in all this, Job did not sin by blaming God. Job 1, 20 through 22. But the ordeal was not yet over. Job was then smitten from head to toe with painful boils in chapter 2 and verse 7, which caused fever and blackened his skin, as it says in Job 30 and verse 30. And while he was incapacitated, rather than receiving encouragement from his wife, she traumatized him further with criticism and blame. She even told him to give up, to curse God and die. What kind of, what kind of encourager or wife would that be? I hope that your spouse is an encourager and not a condemner or a blamer. Incidentally, Job's wife is never mentioned again in Scripture, which tells you right then and there maybe uh, she wasn't uh, what he needed in his life, obviously. But whatever. Finally, Job is visited by three so-called friends who only add to his distress by piling on with false accusations and judgmentalism. Eliphaz accused Job of harboring secret sin as the reason for his calamities in Job 4.7. Bildad similarly accused Job, even suggesting that his children had also been to blame, Job 8 and verse 4. And Zophar was even more condemning, calling Job a liar for defending himself, Job 11 and verse 3 through 4, and referring to him as a wicked hypocrite. They obviously hurt Job deeply, who called them miserable comforters, which must be a, a kind way of putting it. And he, he replied and said, How long will you... Torment my soul and break me in pieces with words, Job 19 and verse 2. These were not the kind of people who are really on your side. Job lost everything. The lives of his ten children, all of his livestock, all but four of his servants, his health, the respect and support of his wife, and his friends. And if it ended this way, it would be, it would be a, a terrible and sad story. But thank God this is not how it concluded. Despite everything, Job never lost his integrity, as it says in Job 2 and verse 3, and never cursed or spoke improperly against the Lord. Verses 10 and Job 42 and verse 8 tells us that. He held steadfast to his faith and his trust in God. Because of his faithfulness, God not only restored, but multiplied everything he had lost, as it says in Job 42, 12 through 13. God finally turned the captivity of Job and brought the ordeal to an end when this happened. Now listen very carefully. It says, when Job prayed for his friends who had been so brutal and condemning, I've always suspected that the emotional toll from these false comforters may have been 
the nail in the coffin, so to speak, the most difficult thing he endured of all. And maybe it was intended to be that way, that this was the ultimate temptation or trial that he would endure. But by choosing to pray for them and not allowing himself to become bitter, put himself over the top in, in, uh, in God's eyes. Maybe this was the final uh, thrust by the devil, his best effort to destroy him, to get him to curse his friends and to be angry at them and bitter. The Bible says, and the Lord restored Job's losses when he prayed for his friends. Indeed, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Job 42 and verse 10. Have you ever been hurt by Christian friends who did something similar to you? Maybe it wasn't on this level. But they betrayed you, they hurt you, they spoke against you. Or in your most difficult moments in life, they, they blamed you and condemned you. I'm sure that many of you have. I have too. And whether they meant to or not, I've experienced wounds at times from those I trusted as friends whom I so much hoped to receive encouragement, but instead got just the opposite. It's another reminder to keep your eyes on Jesus and never put an absolute trust in people. Nobody. Because they're all human and can fail you. And more often than not, they will let you down at some point. But wounds of this kind are a test that you must overcome, a trap the devil sets up, hoping you will stumble in your relationship with God. Now, now, you see, Satan cannot overcome a child of God directly, but he exploits deceptions to help you trip yourself up by harboring a grudge, bitterness, or unforgiveness, which is sin, and which interferes with your fellowship with the Lord. Jesus said that you must forgive if you want to be forgiven. So this is why you must forgive others, and why Praying for those who let you down is so vital. As Jesus said, pray for those who spitefully use you in Luke 6, 28. It's pretty hard to remain bitter towards somebody you pray for. And when you overcome in this fashion, the Lord will be able to release his blessings in your life, just like he did with Job. This is the amazing part of the story. And the real lesson that we learn about trials, not only did God restore Job, but he even doubled what he had before, and get this, even doubling the double years of his life on the earth. It's believed that Job was around 70 when this testing began and lived 140 more years. The Bible says, Then all his brothers, sisters, and former friends came and feasted with him in his home, and they consoled him and comforted him because of all the trials the Lord had brought against him. And each of them brought him a gift of money and a gold ring. So that the Lord blessed Job in the second half of his life even more than in the beginning. For now he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 teams of oxen, 1,000 female donkeys. He also gave Job seven more sons and three more daughters. Job 42, 11, and 13. The history of Job's life shows us that even the most devoted followers of the Lord Jesus Christ are not exempt from problems, from the possibility of awful trials and difficulties, but, listen, but we know that God will not allow us to suffer anything without purpose and will use whatever challenges in our life to help make us stronger and bring about promotion in the end. As we quoted previously from God's Word, it's worthy of repeating it again, God causes everything to work together for good to those who love God and are the called according to His purpose, as it says in Romans 8 and verse 28. The most difficult scripture in the entire Bible, I think, for people to believe. And yet it is true. 
And yet we must embrace this as much as we do any other part of the, the gospel. Everything that happens to you in your life as a believer, when you have put your trust and your faith in God to take care of you and your life is in His hands, it's all working together. Not all of it will be good. Some of it will be bad, tough, hard, but it's working together just like the weave of a, of a fabric, just like a quilt. If you are familiar, I remember my mom and grandmother sewing quilts when I was a, a kid. Our church would have even quilt parties where they would get together and everybody would make quilts and they would take patches from a cloth that was left over. In those days, a lot of the ladies made their own dresses made their own uh, coats and this sort of thing and they would have a lot of fabric laying around and they bring all that together and sew uh, little uh, patches together maybe four inches square something that way and and they would end up with a beautiful blanket with this assorted quilted material that's that patchwork that uh, uh, network of things that happened in our life is the way God puts our life together. And even though things may not be good, He is working everything together for a good purpose for your life. And He says that uh, the Lord will eventually deliver us all from these things. Well, let's pray today. I want to pray for you and perhaps this really touches a nerve in your life. You've got to forgive. You've got to forgive and you've got to hang on and to embrace the things that God has said here in His Word, that despite what may, things may seem, He has not for, forsaken you, He has not abandoned you, but wants you to embrace Him, trust Him, and believe Him to pull you through. As one preacher said years ago, if you can stand the squeeze, God will pull you through. And I believe that today. Hey, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, would, this would be a, a wonderful time to say, Jesus, come into my heart, forgive me of my sins. Let me be your child today. And I'm putting a, a, a address on the screen that you can go to that will tell you more about that. But before we go today, let's pray. Father, I'm asking today in the name of Jesus that you will strengthen each of my, my friends that are watching today. And Lord, help them to, to stand strong in faith and steadfast, knowing that you are in control, that you have not abandoned them, that you are bringing them through their difficulties and their trials. And Lord, I pray that today you will give them victory and joy in their heart to know that you are in charge and that you're bringing them through today. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. God bless you, my friend. Thank you for being with us today. For more information, please visit our website at victorious.org. Until next time, God bless you.